Hello everybody, new video on 1912 project. So, uh, got some work done uh, after the last video. Uh, I don't know for sure what I filmed in the last video, but I think uh, the last time I was ready to put the exhaust in the new car, I will show it in a minute. So, at first, if this is your first video of my 1912 project that is getting in the last phase before starting, uh, look below the video or in the right corner for you there's my logo click on it go to my main page or look in the playlist for the complete project or look in on my website jamespeedshop.com that's below here jamespeedshop.com have a look there and uh, don't forget to subscribe of course if you not already did so uh, at this point I am um, pretty f uh, pretty far in uh, building up everything around the engine so I think the last time I did not have the oil cooler and the radiator in it already so I put the um, radiator in front of it and oil cooler and all the lines what I wanted to do is uh, prime the uh, oil system without turning over the engine uh, just because it should be possible but I could not get it completely done because uh, yeah I have to get a line to get pressure in the system through the filter and there is one line that I can get off and that's the line of my oil cooler and I don't just don't have the connections for it because normally this is the how the oil cooler system looks like so if you look to the system I want to use this line there's a thermostat in it oil thermostat and that will go open on 106 degrees a little bit but uh, mine is already a little bit open I, there is no nothing in there if you got a little bit of flow I think that should be a uh, normal way because if there was some air in it and you just start the engine and it will open uh, the system and you will get a lot of air out of the other side then you will get a drop in oil pressure when you're driving so I think there's always a little bit of flow on it so I think uh, that's the way it works so that was my plan just to pump oil pressure in here through the filter and then into the system but um, yeah I cannot get it work, working that way just the way I want it so I could use the inlet of the uh, uh, oil pressure sensor it's a small inlet but that one is going straight into um, into here you, it's not in the drawing here but I think it's going straight in B and B is the, the passageway to the bearings so I don't want to do that uh, pump oil in it that's not going to the filter I think that's a possibility but I don't want that so what I now did is filter the system I got 10 liters of oil in the system I completely filled up the uh, oil cooler there was one liter in it in the lines and in the cooler and uh, my level uh, was going up in here I will show you some pictures if you look on my website there will be some pictures below the this video you can see how the in inlet of the inside of the filter housing is look like so what I did is uh, just filled up the complete system and the pipe to the bearing point is filled up got the, uh, the sump is filled up it's a little bit over level I think it's about uh, 300 milliliters over level but that's that will be okay because it needs to fill up the filter completely and um, because there's all this is like a liter of oil in there so it needs a lot of another three or four milliliters and needs to fill up the complete uh, oil uh, lines in the engine block because I think it will be all drained out of it most of it <coughs> I think only the bearings will have some oil in it so um, and the complete system should hold 10 liters of oil so then it will be uh, completely like I have now because there's 10 liters of oil in the system uh, so have a look for the videos down below uh, photos down below the next thing what I also did was uh, primed the steering uh, box system all the lines are in there have a look where I've got my lights I will show you underneath the car also but I got uh, all the lines in there lines in there you can see down below there that the connections are on it the connections are on here I made some space I need to paint it a little bit but I have some space here the engine will not move that much also on the bottom one I have some space over there that was not pretty not easy to <coughs> fit it on um, cooling lines are on it also got cooling water in it 
Um, so that's all pretty good. My radiator is uh, not leaking. It's also pretty good, not at this point. Yesterday I thought it was leaking, but I flushed out the radiator with normal water and it's a little bit wet. And if you throw coolant in it, then the water will not re it will not dry that fast. So it was completely wet. So I uh, it's now a lot drier and it's not leaking. At first I had it leaking uh, here, that's a drain point of the radiator, there are two O-rings in it, they were completely dried out, I put two new ones in it, and it's also closed. So, um, next thing what I also did is all underneath the car, I think. So, it's not leaking, so it's also very nice that you don't have any leaks from cooling water, that sort of stuff, no sensor leaks, it's just uh, got a small leak, what I had was from the uh, radiator. So let's put the car up. So, I think the last time also the exhaust was not underneath the car, only the end piece. So what I need to do at first, I need to get some uh, heat wrap around this, I want to wrap it in. Only the damper will not be wrapped, so it will be wrapped from here to there. And I think I will wrap this last piece just to keep the heat in the exhaust. So the rest is all done, pretty, it's all pretty nice and done. This is all wrapped, uh, got the two uh, lapdas in there, also got uh, a look, it's, it's going in here, so uh, this is all heat uh, wrap around the wires, that's from stand up from the bus sensors. Uh, I have to wire it up here, so it will not hit the pipe. Um, also got the, uh, this is like the connection of the parking lock. I have it still on it, so I can do something with it, so it will lock uh, the parking uh, switch. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I did not. I could cut it off here and just leave it, but now I can still do something with it. So I move it inside and have a look what I'm going to do. So the other side, also the other lambda, will go. Uh, I need to put it on here like this. It's nice and tidy. So uh, oil uh, lines from the transmission are in, over there it's nice and connected, I got the heat sleeve around it, I mentioned a few uh, weeks ago, a few videos, a few weeks, more than a few weeks, a few videos back I want to do that because the exhaust is in here and I don't want to get uh, the hoses dried out because of the heat of the exhaust and this is pretty good stuff, uh, it's a lot of uh, things you that is used in the industry for like uh, keep hoses and wires uh, protected is like a uh, fire blanket I call it I thought I thought fire blanket or something so also this side is connected nice and tidy it's going over the steering box it will just go uh, over there it's all all wrapped so now you can see also uh, how close it is this is my uh, steering box I don't know if I showed it you already but it's pretty tight so I've got the two connections in from my transmission uh, or uh, from my uh, steering box, I'm over here. I got this stuff around it for uh, keep it from rubbing uh, the hose. It needs some tie wrap here and over there, just to make sure. I got the original oil sensors out of my uh, system because at first uh, I want to have a reading in my ECU to see what the uh, oil pressure is doing. If that's all stable, I can get, uh, I have ordered the T piece to have two oil pressure sensors on it. But then the system, the, 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 you've got two sensors hanging on one connection and with all the vibration it can crack or anything else. So I think what my plan is, first going to drive with this oil pressure sensor is a 0 to 7 bars and I get a very accurate reading to my ECU and can see what the oil pressure of the engine will do. And later on I will put the old sensor back in. Uh, and then I have uh, just a reading on my dash and then also the lights, everything will work. And I think uh, that will be enough because that will show also an accurate oil pressure from 0 to 3 bars and uh, that will be good enough to have because in all the engines, this is a standard engine, it's not uh, tuned or anything else, it will be just be remapped. So that will be good enough. So but first I'm going to use this one. So the other lines uh, these are the two lines from my transmission. The heat wrap will stop here. Here is a protection cover. Both lines are uh, connected. Don't tune the cooler. Uh, I got enough room here. It will not touch it. So that's good. Uh, oil cooler lines. Just like stock. Stock connected. 
also there the stock connected new o-rings in there um, so yeah this one is connected to the oil cooler also filled up completely the other one also so it's all uh, everything has enough play um, I did some wrapping already to get the hoses it's not completely strapped but it's enough to get uh, the hoses not from uh, shifting around over pipes or anything else so I always do it like this also with a small piece of rubber in it so you don't get any uh, cuts in your hoses also here you can see just keep the hoses from rubbing and moving uh, to something so uh, yeah also this one is connected I ordered it it's a 50 kilo uh, uh, weird connection there's also another one over here that was my standard connection to the transmission I also use that again why I using a 50 kilodat uh, earth connection because I also have a 50 kilodat wire uh, to my starter motor and uh, I calculated it and it was 180 I thought this was, I don't know for sure this was a 2200 watt starter motor so it could get to 180 amps so 180 amps is 50 quadrat wire so I just want to have for sure that I don't have any earth falls in my engine block so I just want to have a good so this is a uh, pretty expensive uh, for a small piece it's about 30 euros or something but yeah I think you can better do it good than don't do it at all so that's all connected uh, so that's underneath the car so also the cooling lines here are connected this is your, this is an ohm connection and this piping is not room, but, but normally it's going on the outside. Yeah, but yeah, I don't have the room there. So uh, this house is still uh, flexing. So I want to have a piece of rubber in here. And I will connect it uh, on top of the radiator. So I have the space in between the engine. Because when I'm going to drive, through, uh, when I have airflow, this will go in here. And I don't want that. So I have to fix it. Uh, so it will not uh, it's going uh, with the flow inside and hitting the top of the, the front of the engine so uh, I have to look how I'm going to fix that but it will work out I think so for the rest everything is connected so the next thing is what I'm going to do now is uh, it's all in Dutch here but uh, the Dutch people will can read this so what do I do with the transmission uh, the transmission has five liters of oil in in the sump that's how uh, the book is telling you to, how to do it. Just put five liters in it. Normally, you you will have to start the engine, and uh, you start it, and then go through all the gears, and then uh, 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 stop the engine and have a look what the oil level is going to do. If it's dropped that much that you don't have any oil on the dipstick, you have to pour something in, and then you have to get it up to 80 degrees and uh, fill it up to top level so um, when I'm looking in the <coughs> in the manual it says my system should have around 8.6 liters of oil in it I have uh, in my torque converter is already one and a half liters of oil and I've got five liters in the sump so it's six and a half liters so it will be uh, I think in the limit and not too low to have it just running so I think I have to fill it up then because one centimeter of sump level is uh, 840 cc's that's about uh, the capacity of here so that's two centimeters and the complete dipstick is about five I thought so it will give me enough play to have my focus on the engine when I'm going to start it for the first time so um, what I did with the uh, the transmission cooler is the only one that's empty so I got the radiator completely filled up and the oil system completely filled up the steering box was going in about 800 cc's to one liter so that's all filled up so uh, all looks good so the things that I need to do uh, is I need to have the starter motor signal connected to the start motor uh, that's this small wire if you can see it you can see there uh, is my uh, the big one is my uh, plus to the starter motor to the original starter motor wire uh, oil pressure sensor it needs to be connected that's this one uh, also going to wire up the original loom so I can switch over the the signal to the dash if I got the other sensor in there uh, cooling fans need to be connected 
two cooling fans will be over here. The wires are already here. I think that's this one. This is the wire for the two uh, cooling fans. They will be connected to an input signal, uh, two separate input signals, so it will, can be controlled with two different temperatures. What? I don't know yet. Uh, cooling water temperature to the dash. That's on top. That's, uh, I'll show you how to drop the car. So my oil of uh, cooling temperature, uh, this is for the ECU. This is the cooling sensor for the ECU. And this is the cooling sensor for the dash. Um, these ones I'm not going to use. These ones were for the uh, ECU. There are two sensors in one. Uh, I thought one was for air conditioning or anything. I think this one was for air conditioning originally. Uh, I put another sensor in it, but this one is for the dash. And these ones were for controlling the ECU uh, originally. There were two ECUs in the car. That's why there are two, uh, four sensors. One for the left ECU, one for the right ECU. One for the dash and one for the air conditioning or the cooler fans. I don't know for sure. Something like that. But I'm not going to use these sensors. Just leave them in. Uh, this one is for the dash. And I think that's the green. The green wire is for the for this one. So it's only one connector. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I press for the dash. I already said it. Uh, sump level. That's a small connector that is over there. I put a new sensor in it a few few years back. I want to connect that because I think that's yeah, it's in there and I, the wiring is in there. So I just want to have it working. It's always better to uh, to have a signal for something that's keeping you from destroying the engine. So that will be also in there. Uh, horns I need to place. Got to they do uh, these two horns. They were normally in front here somewhere. I think they were here. I uh, don't know if they will fit because I got two radiators in. I also have to. Uh, have a look what I'm going to do with this piece because I got two uh, fans in here and they need to fit behind uh, behind the grill. So that's what I'm going to do first. If I got that done, uh, then I'm pretty close to get uh, all the wires into the ECU. I can show you how it looks like now. So if you can see. Uh, my issue is no connector in it yet. Uh, these are all the wires in here. Um, this everything needs to be connected in there. Uh, one signal from there, throttle position needs to go to the uh, to the issue from the transmission. So everything needs to be connected here. But first, I'm going to get everything in the engine bay ready for this. So that's it. So, I hope you like this update, so we're getting step by step closer. So it looks all pretty good, hope it will stay like that. Uh, I got play everywhere, uh, just like I planned, so nothing is too close to each other. It's all close, but not too close. So, hope you liked the video, put your thumbs up, uh, have a look at my website, jamespeedshop.com, and if you don't have subscribed yet, uh, do that if you like this project. In the right corner for you is my logo. Click on it. Go to my main page. And thanks for watching. And see you for the next one. Bye-bye.